Hare Krishna. So thank you all very much for taking out your valuable time to come here and assemble at Sri Sri Radha Gopinath Mandir for the Sunday feast program. It's not an easy task to leave one's home and travel all the way in such a heat to arrive here and partake of the hear the glories of the Supreme Lord. So I was asked to speak uh, something about the ongoing darshans that we are having in our temple. So starting from Akshay Tritya, which was on 29th of April, last Saturday. For 21 days, we have a festival in our temple, which is known as the Chandan Yatra Festival. Sometimes when we speak this word Chandan Yatra, people think that we have to pe leke jane wale hai So this is not that you know, traveling yatra, but this is the Chandan Yatra festival where the Lord is smeared with sandalwood pulp. All of you must have seen that there is a facility available where devotees can grind sandalwood into pulp and that is smeared on the body of Gopalji. So today we are having the darshan of uh, Phalam Priya Gopal. So this is a pastime that is mentioned in the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And very beautiful pastime actually. Prabhupada describes in the Krishna book very eloquently that how one time in Vrindavan there is a fruit vendor who comes to sell her fruits and she arrives at Nanda Bhavan and here is small little Gopal, small little Krishna. He sees the calling of the fruit vendor. Like even in our you know, small cities, sometimes there are these people, you know, these vendors, they shout from their home and little children, they get enamored. You know, Mama, I want to buy this or, you know, Mere ko khana hai, kharido, kharido. So something of that sort, Krishna comes out of Nanda Bhavan and he sees that here is a fruit vendor and her basket is filled with a variety of fruits. So Krishna goes very innocently, he's a small little uh, toddler kind of. And he goes and he asks this vendor for some fruits. So the fruit vendor says, but you'll have to pay something. Now Krishna, he's, of course, he's Bhoktaram Yagya Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram. He's the Lord and Master of the entire creation. But Krishna, he's feeling like uh, but I don't have anything. How, how can I give you something? But the fruit vendor is insisting, no. no. You'll have to get me something. So Krishna runs into his home and he asks Mother Yashoda to give him something by which he can take those fruits. Of course, in that time, this is uh, Dwapar Yuga. This is not Kali Yuga. There were no credit cards and there, were no, there was no Paytm and you know, uh, online transfer. In fact, there was no cash or there was no money. That was also a cashless transaction. You know. So here is Krishna. You know, he just gets some grains. Now imagine a small little boy. How much grain can a small little boy hold in his fist? A very small, tiny amount of grain. And even that Krishna is carrying from inside, by the time he comes out and he sees, you know, he comes till the fruit vendor, most of the grains have fallen on the way. Now, hardly a few grains are left in his hand. But then seeing the beauty of small Gopal, this fruit vendor is very much captivated. And so much so, she is willing to give her entire basket of fruits to Krishna. Just because she becomes so happy seeing this beautiful child's intense eagerness to you know, get these fruits. So just to please Krishna, this lady, this fruit vendor, she gives all the basket of fruits that you take. And Krishna is, again, a small little boy. He has just given a few grains. And he holds all those fruits like this. And he has a whole pile of fruits in front of him. He is unable to see his way back to Nanda Bhavan. But nonetheless, he is walking back with all those fruits, the entire basket of fruits, you know, back home. And this small fruit vendor, she is just looking and she is satisfied that she has pleased 
this small little child gopal little did she know that she was that this small little child is none other than the supreme personality of godhead and a small gesture to please that supreme personality of godhead can be very much rewarding and then this fruit vendor she looks back expecting her basket to be empty correct because that is how no she had just given the whole lot of fruits to krishna but lo and behold she sees that her whole basket of fruits is filled with valuable jewels and valuable ornaments and she is like completely surprised that how come this has happened but that is what acharyas explain that when krishna he says in the bhagavad gita patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayachhati tad aham bhakti upahritam asnami prayatatmanah there are so many people who may offer big big things but actually krishna is not hungry for the big offerings of his of the people all that he is hungry is the love of his devotees those of you who know the the understanding of krishna consciousness we understand that how the conditioned soul when he moves out from the spiritual world and he comes into this material world he is wanting to enjoy for himself right but then krishna is knowing that this person can't be happy out there in the material world in order for him to be happy he needs to get back to me and just remain in a position of serving me and that is how he'll be happy so any gesture of love shown by such a conditioned soul pleases krishna like anything so this beautiful darshan that we are having today is phalam priya gopal that how gopal he is very much not in need of the fruits and flowers of his devotees because he says even a small little fruit even a small little flower can please him if it is offered with love in that verse of the gita he repeats this word bhaktya twice tad aham bhakti upahritam asnami prayatatmanah that i am looking for the devotion of my devotee so of course we have a lot of fruits we don't have just one fruit here and uh, maybe you will have to wait till the darshan closes at night where in the dt department sevaks can will be distributing those fruits so just a advertisement if you want those maha fruits maybe you'll have to wait for some time and uh, today also happens to be a very very important day which will be the major portion of our discussion today afternoon today is the very auspicious appearance day of rukmini devi rukmini devi as you know is the consort one of the principal queens of lord shri krishna and today is her appearance day and uh, we'll just try to glorify her and beg for her blessings that we can also develop an iota of her devotion that she has for lord shri krishna and the kind of dedication that she has you know demonstrated in the past times that krishna was enacting here 5000 years back Sri Lal Brindavan Das Thakur is one of our acharyas in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Sri Lal Brindavan Das Thakur in Chaitanya Bhagavat he gives a very beautiful analogy. He says that the glories of the Lord are unlimited like the sky. जो भगवान की ख्याति है, जो भगवान के जो गुण हैं, वो आसमान के जैसे असीमित है. It's unlimited like the sky. and any person who wants to glorify the supreme lord can only do so as per his knowledge and as per his capacity to glorify the lord and he compares such a person to a bird just like a bird wants to fly right but even though she wants the bird wants to fly but it can't cover the entire sky correct there are some birds like peacock peacock is there so peacock also flies how many of you have seen peacocks fly please raise your hands right how high can peacocks fly 
five feet, ten feet. Maybe they can fly up till a climb up till a wall or something like that. But they can't fly very high. But then, you know, Bombay is filled with uh, uh, maybe parrots or you know, more than parrots. There are crows and <laughs> sparrows in uh, the pigeons in Bombay. Yes, you now those birds can fly a little more higher, right? But then there are other birds who can really fly very high, like the hawk is there, like the eagle is there. It is said that when a storm approaches, even when the storm is approaching, the eagle just sets flying, and it takes shelter of the strong winds of the storm to raise itself above the storm. So while the storm is raging behind, beneath, the eagle is flying. and soaring high up in the air so similarly there are exalted devotees of the lord there are great acharyas in the bona fide paramparas and those acharyas when they glorify the lord they can actually glorify to a very great extent right just like the eagles and the hawks who can fly to a very you know high altitudes but then depending on our capacity depending on our knowledge which is limited in nature we can fly till a certain extent so as it is mentioned that the glories of the supreme lord and his associates are unlimited so similarly the glories of rukmini devi glories of shrimati radharani glories of god nitai they are unlimited in nature like the sky and we are just small little infinitesimal living entities how much can we glorify them it is mentioned that even ananta shesha even when ananta shesha wants to glorify the lord it glorifies with his unlimited mouths and it has been glorifying since time immemorial still the ananta shesha has not finished the glorification so we don't have so much time also what to talk of unlimited no shortly prasad time will be there and everyone will be you know wanting when the lecture will end so we'll just try to uh, explain to a certain degree whatever we can so the background is described again in the shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto there are around four five chapters where the discussion or where the narration of the past times of rukmini devi is mentioned and the background is such that kimsa kamsa has summoned krishna and balram to come from vrindavan to mathura kamsa has sent akrura and akrura brings krishna and balram to mathura and after going through mathura and killing kuvalya peed and killing uh, you know delivering kubja and other people there finally there is this you know confrontation between krishna and kamsa and to cut a long story short kamsa is killed by krishna now the game begins after kamsa is actually killed kamsa had the his two wives asti and prapti and these two personalities asti and prapti they run crying to her their father who is their father jarasand so jarasand was the king of the magadh province and asti and prapti they go to jarasand and they submit their plea that look how our husband was so you know innocent so meritorious and this boy krishna he has killed him so mercilessly so jarasand he is also agitated and he is also very much angry and he wants to take revenge on krishna and he feels that how dare this small little boy krishna he kill my you know very virtuous and very innocent son in law right kamsa innocent dear kamsa little did you know that kamsa was every day sending his uh, you know agents into vrindavan to kill krishna and balram and all the you know other inhabitants of vraja but the story begins that how jarasan along with his entire army he attacks mathura now when krishna and balram you now they see jarasan come with his armies krishna and balram very effortlessly they finish off they defeat the entire army of jarasan but then they leave jarasan now that is not what kshatriyas do kshatriyas typically first they kill the king 
because if the king is killed the army is expected to be defeated everyone has to accept a defeat now here krishna is acting in a little contrary manner he doesn't kill the king jarasan he kills his entire army he kills all the people who had come with jarasan to fight with krishna and he leaves jarasan so bhagavatam explains that one of the purposes of krishna's descent in this world as he says in the gita is paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya cha duskritam dham dharma samsthapnarthaya sambhavami yuge yuge vinashaya cha duskritam kriti means activities karma karma se kriti aata hai so kriti is activities duskriti means sinful activities or you know demoniac activities vinashaya cha duskritam so at that point of time 5000 years back this whole earth was so burdened by these unscrupulous kings these demoniac kings who were ruling in different different parts of the globe the whole planet earth and the purpose why krishna leaves jarasan is because jarasan had a very strong hold pr bahut acha tha jarasan ka pure duniya bhar mein so krishna and balram they knew very well that if this fellow jarasan is left he will definitely get back with more and more people to sab sara game ek hi jagah baithe baithe kaam ho jayega hame logon ko maarne ke liye 10 jagah jaane ki avashyakta nahi padegi right so that is why the armies of jarasan are killed and jarasan is let loose once jarasan is let loose he is again fuming just like a snake just like a trampled snake no if you don't disturb a snake still it looks fearful but if someone tramples on a snake the anger of the snake you know increases so here is jarasan he again returns back humiliated to his magadha province with a stronger determination to avenge the murder of his son in law and then sure enough as krishna and balram had expected jarasan gets hold of many more kings and he once again attacks mathura second time also krishna and balram very effortlessly king kill all the kings and this and but then again second time also jarasan is let let loose he is also left he is not killed now this whole thing happens a good 17 times 17 times jarasan attacks mathura and all the armies are killed and jarasan is you know left to go back with increased uh, what to say uh, hatred for krishna and he gets hold of more and more people more and more armies and he comes back but the 18th time is a little different krishna and balram learn that along with jarasand there is another party who is planning to attack mathura from the opposite side and that is a yavana king his name is kala yavan so now krishna and balram they are kind of you know little bored with you know fighting with the same people again and again what is this person again you know he is let loose matlab ek kuch had hoti hai right there is some sense you know you are being defeated time and again you should learn your lesson but looks like jarasand was kind of a very obstinate person and kind of he was like not learning his lesson so krishna and balram thought ki theek hai is bar no let's not pay so much heed to him let's deal with this fellow you know kalyavan thoda fight mein bhi thoda variety chahiye krishna always looks for variety so kalyavan he attacks and the story goes we'll not get into the details of how kalyavan is killed but then krishna he just he runs away with kalyavan chasing him from behind and then they run into the cave where uh, muchukunda king muchukunda is taking rest and muchukunda he by the power of his glands he kills kalyavan you can refer to krishna book for the details of how just by the power of glands that is known as the muchukunda glands no sometimes people look at you so intensely as if you know that is a replica of the muchukunda glands so again by after kalyavan is killed krishna comes back to mathura hey hey sab log hai 
हमारे साथ में है ना कैसे कहानी कहानी आगे बढ़ रही है सो यस अगेन कृष्णा कम्स बैक टू मथुरा बट देन बिफोर जरासन अटैक्स कृष्णा लर्नस न यू मस्ट बी वंडरिंग कि आज इन्होंने बोला कि टुडे इज रुक्मिनी द्वादशी बट देन रुक्मिनी देवी वॉज इन द्वारका एंड वी आर येट इन मथुरा वेन विल वी गो टू द्वारका एंड वेन विल दी एक्चुअल पास्ट टाइम ऑफ रुक्मिनी देवी स्टार्ट सो दिस इज वेयर यू नो दी इंटरेस्टिंग टर्न इन द स्टोरी हैपन्स एज कृष्णा ही लर्नस दैट देर इज समथिंग दैट ही नीड्स टू अटेंड टू and then what he does is something very surprising he leaves when jarasand attacks he leaves jarasand and he runs back he doesn't fight that war now mind you krishna had defeated the same person jarasand 17 times now here is jarasand it's not that he had got more armies or more number of people to fight of course the number of armies that jarasand had got this 18th time was 23 akshavhinis how much 23 akshavhinis the entire battle of mahabharat at kurukshetra the total number of armies was 18 akshavhinis seven on the side of the pandavas 11 on the side of the kauravas now jarasand was here ye sab bacha kucha mal tha by the way ha 17 bar ladne ke baad kitne bache the 23 akshavhini now just imagine how much people were killed in those 17 times uh, battle but on this 18th time jarasan attacked with 23 akshavhinis but krishna he did not face jarasan he just runs away from the battle now it is very interesting that whatever krishna does he is glorified for that and that is why one of the names of the supreme lord is ran chhod right the lord is glorified as one who runs away from the battle usually kshatriyas are glorified when they you know fight very valiantly in the battle but here is krishna he is running away from the battle and the devotees are you know clapping their hands you have been to dakor sometimes right dakor ma kon che raja ran chhod che right so yes the lord is glorified as ran chhod rai in dakor It's a very beautiful temple in Gujarat. So the Acharya's question that why does the Lord do so? And and after running away from there, Krishna and Balram they climb atop a very very high mountain. The name of the mountain is Pravarshana, because it is explained why this mountain is named Pravarshana, because always Indra used to shower rains. on the mountain pravarshana there was always this rainfall happening there so krishna and balram they climb this huge tall mountain and jarasand is following behind and he searches for the whole mountain he is unable to find krishna now wicked as jarasand was what he does is he surrounds the whole mountain with firewood and he lights up the whole mountain on fire na rahega bas na bajegi बासुरी टू होम सो एवर इट मे कंसर्न बता ना लेटर पे देखा होगा आपने राइट वेर एवर कृष्णा मे बी ऑन दिस हिल मे ही बी बर्न टू एशेस सो जरासन ही जस्ट लिट्स अप दी होल माउंटेन ऑन फायर एंड इट इज एक्सप्लेन दैट कृष्णा एंड बलराम दे जम्प फ्रॉम द माउंटेन इफ यू सीन अ पिक्चर इन कृष्णा बुक देर इज अ ब्यूटिफुल पिक्चर दैट डिपेक्ट दैट हाउ कृष्णा एंड बलराम दे आर जम्पिंग फ्रॉम सच अ ग्रेट हाइट now that great height was not one or two storied how much was that great height you know that was 11 yojanas in height one yojan is 13 kilometers proper defines many places in his books one yojan is 13 kilometers so how much is 11 yojanas something around 140 150 kilometers 150 kilometer upar se chhalang laga bhi aap puche acha maza aa gaya ye bhagavatam mein bhi अच्छा जोक लिखा रहता है डेढ़ सौ किलोमीटर मतलब डेढ़ सौ किलोमीटर तो कहाँ माउंट एवरेस्ट भी नहीं होगा कितना रहेगा हाउ मच इज माउंट समथिंग एट थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी एट समथिंग लाइक दैट राइट नो हियर इज कृष्ण एंड बलराम क्लाइंबिंग फ्रॉम सच अ ग्रेट ह्यूज हाइट हाउ कैन यू डू सो 
and and he doesn't have any bruises he doesn't have a, any broken bones and he is not uh, at all he just gets on his business niche landing hua safe landing and then he gets on to his work no casualties of any kind so how can krishna do like that he gives the reason for this also again the same verse comes to our understanding janma karma chame divyam the nature of the activities of the lord are not ordinary whatever krishna does is not ordinary in nature janma karma chame divyam evam yo vetti tatvatah tektva deham punar janma neti mameti so arjuna that one who understands the nature of my birth and my activities does not upon leaving this body take birth again in this material world so therefore the these past times these narrations of the lord are very much uh, transcendental in nature they are not like you know any other activities when the krishna when krishna is lifting the govardhan hill now govardhan hill has a circumference of 23 kilometers and here was the seven year old boy he lifted the whole govardhan hill for seven days and seven nights and it was not that you know the whole television camera was you know filming the whole episode and abhi kya hone wala hai dekhne wale dekhte hain hum bhagwan krishna agle din bhi utha pate hain ki nahi no it was a effortless endeavor right i mean there was no hue and cry about you know such a big thing has happened the vrajavasis were happy krishna was happy the only person who was in distress was indra so whatever krishna does is not ordinary the past times of the supreme lord is transcendental in nature and the purpose why krishna performs these beautiful inhuman past times is so that our minds get gets absorbed in just thinking how can it happen like this and that is the purpose of krishna performing these past times the success of krishna performing this past times comes when the minds of the living entities comes to a standstill hang ho jata hai samajhte na aap log kabhi kabhi computer pe kaam karte karte computer kya ho jata hai hang ho jata hai kitna bhi aap kuch karo wo desired uh, ye dikhata nahi hai right so similarly the living entities they also want to understand 150 km kaise kood gaye you know ye kaisa aisa kaise ho sakta hai if you read the chaitanya charitamrit maybe you will get get uh, bigger bouncers than this chaitanya charitamrit has many more things which will surprise us but then when we understand that the past times of the lord are transcendental in nature and because the lord is supremely capable of doing anything and everything therefore the devotees of the lord they are not bewildered when they hear these you know great uh, past times of the lord and someone may again question that why did krishna run away from the battlefield was he fearful of jarasand why would he be fearful he had already defeated jarasand 17 times there was no reason for him to come back but then it is explained that krishna had to cater to something very very urgent he had to cater to something very important and therefore he even regarded the prospect of fighting with jarasand on a low priority he gave it a low priority because he had to some he had to attend to something more urgent and that is when shri sukadev goswami in bhagavatam he describes the next 2 uh, 3 chapters describes how krishna he goes to vidarbha to kidnap rukmini devi and the marriage of krishna and rukmini so that was just the background and we'll begin with uh, so bhagavatam presents that uh, parikshit maharaj asks sukadev goswami that tell me more how did my great grandfather uh, no sorry how did uh, uh, lord krishna who is the supreme personality of godhead he kidnapped uh, rukmini devi and tell me in detail about the marriage between krishna and rukmini so then sukadev goswami goes on describing about the identity of rukmini devi he mentions he says bhagavan api govinda upayema kurudvah vaidarbhim bhishmaka sutam shriyo matram swayamvare 
प्रमथ्य तरसा राज्य सालवादी चैद्य पक्षगाण पश्यताम सर्वोकाण तार्क्षपुत्र सुधाम इव ओ हीरो अमॉंग्स द कुरूज द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड हिमसेल्फ गोविंद मैरिड भीष्मकस डॉटर वैदर्भी हु वॉज अ डिरेक्ट एक्सपेंशन ऑफ द गॉडेस ऑफ फॉर्च्यून द लॉर्ड डिड दिस बाय हर डिजायर एंड इन द प्रोसेस ही ही बीट डाउन शालवा एंड द अदर किंग्स हु टूक शिशुपाल्स साइड इंडीड एज एवरी वन वॉस्ड श्री कृष्ण टूक रुक्मिनी जस्ट एज गरुड़ा बोल्डली स्टोल द नेक्टर फ्रॉम द डेमी गॉड्स एंड श्री जीव गोस्वामी ही गिव्स अ वेरी ब्रिलियंट पर्पोर्ट टू दिस पर्टिकुलर वर्ड्स श्री जीव गोस्वामी ही मेन्शन्स that the words shriyo matram indicates that the beautiful rukmini was none other than the expansion of the supreme goddess of fortune and therefore she was worthy to be the bride of the personality of godhead as stated in the brahma samhita shriya kanta kanta param purushah in the spiritual world all the female lovers are goddesses of fortune and the male lover is the supreme personality thus shri la jeeva goswami explains shrimati rukmini devi is a plenary portion of shrimati radharani the kartika mahatmya section of the padma puran states kaishorya gopakantyast yovane raj kanyakah in childhood shri krishna enjoyed with the daughters of cowherd men and in his adolescence he enjoyed with the daughters of kings similarly in the skanda puran we find the statement rukmini dwarav dwaravatyam tu radha vrindavane vane rukmini is in dwarka what shrimati radharani is in the forest of vrindavan so in essence rukmini devi she was the daughter of king bhishmaka who was the king of the vaidarbha province your own dear maharashtra मी आणि माणी माझा महाराष्ट्र की जय सो येस इट्स अ ग्रेट फॉर्च्युन दॅट वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ग्लोरीज अँड पास्ट टाइम्स ऑफ रुक्मिणी देवी ॲट हर ओन होमलँड हिअर सो शी वॉज द डॉटर ऑफ किंग ऑफ वैदर्भ विदर्भ हिज नेम वॉज भीष्मक अँड शी हॅड दीज फाईव्ह ब्रदर्स द एल्डेस्ट ऑफ द ब्रदर वॉज रुक्मी the other word the other brothers were rukma ratha rukma bahu rukma keshan rukma mali now this personality rukmi was a very interesting personality there are actually two versions that how one of the version states that narad muni often used to come to the province of vidarbha to the palace of bhishma ka king bhishma ka and he used to describe and narrate the past times of the supreme lord before the king and his family and there both rukmi along with his other brothers and rukmini they used to hear about the glories of the supreme lord but then depending on the attitude that a person has one person became envious the other person became attracted to the supreme lord here was rukmi because he was in the association of other people like shishupal like jarasan whatever he heard because shishupal shishupal had a inherent envy from his very childhood we have known that how shishupal from his very birth he used to you know uh, speak just foul words for krishna and because rukmi was always in the association of shishupal he also developed that envy for krishna but then there is another version of the story where it is mentioned that in the province of vidarbha there were many businessmen who used to come from dwarka and these businessmen they used to you know extol the glories of krishna that how krishna is so wonderful and he performs uh, such nice uh, activities and it is explained that just by hearing about the glories of the supreme lord rukmini devi she developed that intense uh, desire to be with him hearing about the beauty the prowess the transcendental character and opulence of mukunda from the visitors of the palace 
who sang his praises rukmini decided that he would be the perfect husband for us for her king bhishma ka was a pious man and therefore many spiritually oriented people used to visit his palace and the bhagavata mentions that how undoubtedly these saintly people they openly glorified the supreme lord krishna and hearing from the you know these saintly devotees about krishna rukmini devi she also developed that desire to serve krishna for her entire life so example is given that just like a businessman is very much eager to use any opportunity that is there to make wealth paisa kamane ke liye you know whatever opportunity is there a businessman is eager to you know negotiate that deal and win that deal so similarly a sadhaka or a living entity should also have a similar kind of an eagerness to hear about krishna to learn about the name fame glories and qualities and pastimes of the supreme lord the words from the mouths of saintly devotees or exalted devotees of the lord they are compared to mahaprasad now this is another kind of a mahaprasad just in case you were confusing the mahaprasad that we know is that on a plate that is available but then there are some limitations to that mahaprasad what is the limitation in honoring of mahaprasad there are two rules sometimes there are fasting days hai na fasting ka naam suna hai na sabne ha like on tuesday we are having this nursing chaturdashi coming tuesday and there is fasting till dusk to bhale hi mahaprasad rahega bhagwan ko to sab arpan hota hai लेकिन इवन दो महाप्रसाद इज देयर वी आर मेंट टू बी फास्टिंग फ्रॉम महाप्रसाद अनदर रूल इज दैट यू कैन नॉट ओवर ईट महाप्रसाद लिमिटेड क्वांटिटी में ही ऑनर कर सकते हैं राइट बट द महाप्रसाद अबाउट द नरेश ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड डज नॉट हैव दीज टू लिमिटेशंस देर इज नो फास्टिंग फ्रॉम हियरिंग अबाउट द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड अ डिवोटी शुड बी ईगर टू हियर अबाउट द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड at any number any amounts of occasion and at any opportunity that is available so there is no fasting from hearing about the glories of the supreme lord and there is nothing like overeating jitna sunenge utna purification hoga utna bhagwan ke prati attraction develop hoga there is another beautiful uh, comparison that is given that the remnants the food remnants of the supreme lord that mahaprasad is only available for a short amount of time agar jaldi nahi liya to kya hoga khatam ho jayega some of you may be having that experience when in on the festival days there is a lot of mahaprasad that is available but then everyone knows that if i have to get some mahaprasad i have to use my use my intelligence right because it is limited in nature right it is limited in nature and only few people can honor it pure bombay ko nahi de sakte hai na mahaprasad kya hota hai limited hota hai but krishna katha is not limited in nature krishna katha is unlimited and krishna katha can be distributed to as many number of people as possible so there is no dearth of distribution of krishna katha the only dearth is receiving that krishna katha shri prabhupad used to mention that there is no problem in this world other than the you know absence of the desires of the living entity is to hear about krishna so yes here was rukmini devi who was to regularly hear from these people who used to come from dwarka and extol the glories of the supreme lord and what was the result of that hearing itna sunne pe kya ho gaya just like there are these advertisements hota na abhi kya cheez ka advertisement hota hai main to zyada dekhta nahi hu kya cheez ka advertisement hai ekdam prominent at the top of your mind ha mobile mobile phones or uh, anything for that sort 
तो एक एक बार जहां भी जाओ वहां पे आपको वही एडवर्टिजमेंट दिखेगा लाइक लाइक समटाइम्स हियर यू सी इन दी रेलवे स्टेशन वो एक फोन का ब्रांड रहेगा कोई भी आई एम नॉट फॉर और अगेंस्ट एनी ब्रांड बट देन यू नो वन पर्टिकुलर ब्रांड एंड देन दी होल प्लेटफॉर्म इज फिल्ड विद इतना छोटा बोर्ड उसके बाद इतना बड़ा बोर्ड उसके बाद इतना बड़ा बोर्ड और ट्रेन पे भी पूरा वही फोन का ब्रांड सो अगेन रिपीटेड रिपीटेड नो बम्बार्डमेंट नो व्यू दिस इतना सेल्फी कैमरा इतना बड़ा उसका फ्रंट कैमरा इतना बैक कैमरा और हजार बार सवेरे से लेके शाम तक डे इन एंड डे आउट ऑल थ्रू द वीक ऑल थ्रू द मंथ एवरीवेयर यू गो एवरीथिंग दैट यू सी इज रिमाइंडिंग यू अरे बाय दिस फोन बाय दिस फोन लुक एट यू विल बी लुकिंग वेरी हैंडसम आपका सेल्फी एकदम जोरदार आएगा ये फोन से खींचने से राइट नाउ व्हाट हैपन्स बाय दैट ध्यातो विषयान पुमसा संगस्तेशु उपजायते राइट आई इंटेंस डिजायर टू achieve that particular product takes hold in the mind so here was rukmini devi hearing about krishna repeatedly her desire also strengthened and the and her love for krishna also awakened within her heart so it is said that propad mentions that krishna consciousness is not an artificial imposition on the mind it is present within everyone but it has been forgotten and therefore the most powerful and natural way of reawakening that relationship with krishna is by hearing krishna's holy name and pastimes hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare the chaitanya charitamrit beautifully describes nitya siddha krishna prem sadhya ko banaye श्रवण आदि शुद्ध चित्ते करो ये उदय दैट दी लव ऑफ द लिविंग एंटिटी फॉर द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड इज इनहेरेंटली प्रेजेंट विद इन ईच एंड एवरी लिविंग एंटिटी समटाइम वन टाइम अ रिपोर्टर आज श्रील प्रभुपाद दैट स्वामी जी व्हाट विल हैपन इफ एवरीवन इन द होल वर्ल्ड बिकम्स डिवोटीज बिकम्स इस्कॉन डिवोटीज so now this fellow thought that you know he has cornered prabhupad and maybe he has you know now that prabhupad will be unable to reply anything to him but then prabhupad said actually everyone is a devotee of the supreme lord everyone is krishna's devotees the only difference is that some know it and some don't so this verse of chaitanya charitamrit mentions that how nitya siddha krishna prem sadhya ko banaye that the love of the supreme lord love of the living entity for the supreme is already present in the in a dormant nature within the heart of a living entity and then shravan adi shuddha chitte karo e udoy that how by inculcating the process of devotional service beginning with shravan shravan adi refers to the nine processes of devotional service enunciated by prahlad maharaj shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam and all that so just by hearing about krishna one's love for the supreme lord is bound to be reawakened so it is said that upon leaving this world krishna has left behind shrimad bhagavatam to deliver this dark age of to deliver the people in the dark age of kali and shrimad bhagavatam is non different from krishna and hearing from shrimad bhagavatam especially the 10th canto our hearts will be attracted to the supreme lord now sometimes when we come to the temple we may come here for darshan and we may see some devotees you know glued to darshan dekha hai kabhi aapne wo oh, दर्शन के लिए आए तो उधर ही खड़े हैं और क्या आदान प्रदान हो रहा है नए पहली पहली बार जब ही लोग आते हैं तो हाँ हो गया देख लिया ये कृष्ण है राधा है हाँ हो गया बाकी और क्या अच्छा शैंडेलियर अच्छा है हाँ दीवार भी अच्छे हैं और उधर कौन स्वामी जी बैठे हैं अच्छा हाँ अच्छा ये है क्या आपके संस्था के संस्थापक आचार्य अच्छा 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 हो गया पूरा मंदिर देख के उनको दो मिनट में हो जाता है but then there are some people and, and and i must i must admit the consistency of most of you present here you now coming every sunday early in the morning and being in the association of devotees being in the association of deities 
relishing the association of Krishna. So what is the difference between these two people? Here is someone who is also present before Krishna, who is also present before Gopinath. And here is some other devotee for the last 15 years, 20 years, every Sunday without fail, he has been coming for the morning Bhagavatam class and then he is going away from the temple after the night Shayan Darshan. And then he is reciprocating with the Supreme Lord. What is the difference? The difference is that the other person has an increased quota of his hearing about the Supreme Lord. Because there has been that repeated hearing about Krishna, therefore to some extent that attraction for the Supreme Lord has increased, has developed within the heart of a devotee. So yes, Prabhupada used to mention that the temples of the Krishna consciousness movements, they are universities. They are universities for propagating the glories of the Supreme Lord. And as budding sadhakas, as practicing devotees, we are here as students to learn about Krishna. And the more we <coughs> hear about Krishna, the more our hearts will be attracted by the Lord. And the more we'll also be able to express our surrender before Krishna. So hearing from the right people in the right association in a proper state of mind, that is when love of Krishna will awaken by the grace of the Supreme Lord himself. And another benefit of hearing repeatedly from Krishna, repeatedly hearing about Krishna, is that the heart actually gets transformed. In Ishopanishad, there is this beautiful analogy given that <coughs> just like the sun ray is there, so the sun ray is so powerful that no matter where it falls, it has the potency to purify the place. Right? And even though the sun ray may be falling on a piece of dung, on a piece of excreta, Right? The sun rays have this, has that potency to convert it into soil over a period of time. So similarly, <coughs> hearing Krishna Katha, the impurities within the heart, slowly and gradually, they subside. And the, as in how the heart gets transformed, we are able to increase in our devotion for the Supreme Lord. And then Bhagavatam presents a lot of the stories where devotees who had heard about Krishna, they also developed in their attraction for the Supreme Lord. There, are the, there is the beautiful story of Prahlad Maharaj. How Prahlad Maharaj, he heard about Krishna when he was within the womb of his mother and Narad Muni was describing the glories of the Supreme Lord. Hearing about the glories of the Lord within the womb, he developed that devotion for the Supreme Lord. Hearing about the Supreme Lord from Narad Muni, Dhruva, he increased in his devotion. And there were the wives of the Yajna Patnis, the wives of the ritualistic Brahmanas. That's the story in, again, the 10th canto of Bhagavatam. How just by hearing about Krishna, they also had developed this intense attraction for the Supreme Lord. So yes, here is Rukmini Devi in her palace at Vidarbha in the palace of King Bhishmaka hearing about Krishna. And her attraction for Krishna is growing day by day. And at one point of time, she learns that her brother Rukmi is planning to marry her off to this personality called Shishupal. Now here is Rukmini, the only sister of these five brothers and they are kind of big time people, uh, Rukmi, Rukmaratha and what all other names, I don't remember, Rukma Bahu, Rukma Kesh and Rukma Mali. So there are these big personalities there in Vidarbha and they have decided, family decision ho gaya hai. you know, everything is set now, okay, even Bhishmaka, 
he has also consented yes okay done and rukmi is about to give rukmini in marriage to shishupal what happens next does rukmini think what to do this is what was destined to happen aisa hi hona tha mere karm mein aisa likha hua tha aisa kuch lagta hai kabhi kabhi hamare man mein bhi ye vichar aate hain what to do this is how things are this is how this is what has been in my fate and this is how it has been ordained so therefore let me just accept it no rukmi rukmini she did not just accept the regular state of affairs she was also a kshatriya the bhagavatam purport very beautifully it is mentioned that rukmini she was a king's daughter she was courageous and bold and furthermore she would rather die than lose krishna now just imagine the kind of attraction that had developed within the heart of rukmini that she did not want to compromise on that situation at the same time rukmini devi knowing very well that she cannot argue with her brother she was very sensitive she knew that you know it is useless to argue with a person like rukmi he is not going to hear it he is not going to consent so there is no use talking to sometimes intelligence speaks like that he is yes, better devise some other plan so here is rukmini she very intelligently considering all this she writes a frank explicit letter begging krishna to come and take her away proper describes that this style of marriage is known as the rakshasa style now first time when you hear you know, this rakshasa style it is like something you know how can how can you call krishna a rakshasa like that but that is how this style of marriage is defined so yes rukmini she was aware of the plan and it deeply upset her, upset her and therefore analyzing the situation she quickly sends her trust trustworthy brahmana to krishna in dwarka so the lesson here for us here is that we may also go through a lot of situations and circumstances in life and many a times the mind will just give a reason why do you want to do something different why do you want to do something extra this is just just do what everyone else is doing matlab sunday ko mandir bhi jane ki koi jagah hoti hai mandir bhi har sunday wo bhi kabhi aapko logon ne bola aisa why why go to a temple every sunday and that to go in the morning and come in the evening mandir mein jao theek hai 5 minute mein darshan le lo thoda chadhava chada do ghanti baja do hamare mandir mein to ghanti hai hi nahi <laughs> so many times when people come initially they are looking aapke mandir mein ghanta nahi hai ghanta bol nahi hamare mandir mein ghanti nahi hai hamare mandir mein basuri hai wo bhagwan baja rahe bas <laughs> so yes so sometimes people feel that No. why why be in a temple all day long why do something different bhagwan ka naam aap itne kam umar se japna chalu kar diye ye bhi ye bhi koi umar hai kya haath mein wala pakadne ki ye to jab hi sab retirement ho jaye aapka 65 saal ho jaye aapke aapke jab hi daant jhadne lag jaye tabhi aap mahaprasad khao aapke pairon mein jab hi bilkul bhi taakat na bache tabhi aap kirtan mein aake kya karo डांसिंग करो और क्या आंखों में जब भी शक्ति नहीं बच जाए तभी चंदन यात्रा का दर्शन लो राइट मेनी टाइम्स पीपल से दैट डिवोशनल सर्विस और कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस इज समथिंग टू बी डन एट दी फैग एंड ऑफ योर लाइफ एकदम बुढ़ापे में करने की चीजें ये सॉरी दैट इज नॉट हाउ वी हैव बीन टॉट बाय आवर आचार्य फ्रॉम दी वेरी बिगिनिंग प्रहलाद महाराज से इज वेरी ब्यूटिफुल इन श्रीमद भागवतम kaumaret acharet pragyo from the very tender age of 5 years one should start practicing krishna consciousness and one should learn about krishna because when one has time one can become expert in that particular field just like if, some, if someone is wanting to get a medal get a gold medal in olympics kisi ko agar swimming mein olympics mein gold medal lena ya no relay race mein gold medal hasil karna hai there is a lot of practice that goes into it right you need to learn the art 
you know, go to the Shivaji park here. And there are so many small little children, pura itna bada bada cricket kit leke ekdam savere savere paanch baje maidan mein pohunch jate. Kyun, kyun? Sachin Tendulkar bhanne ke liye. Hey ki ni? I mean, I'm not joking, you just go visit any morning. The whole huge big field is filled with people practicing. Why practicing? So that one day they also become experts. And they are also, ex they should, they would also be able to excel in that particular sports. So similarly, when we understand that this human form of life is meant to finally give up our bodies, remembering Krishna, Anta Kalecha Mameva Smaran Muktva Kalevaram, Yah Prayati Samad Bhavam. Right? Krishna says that one who remembers me at the time of quitting this body does not come back to this material world. That is the purpose of this human form of life. So yes, someone may say, Bhagavan ko yad karna hai na, thik hai, yad kar lenge. I will remember. But doesn't work like that. It is like a foolish student who may think that, okay, I have to crack rank one in IIT JE. Rank one chahiye na, uske liye kya chahiye? Exam mein achcha perform karna. So yes, when the examination paper will come, that is when I will perform, I will write all those questions in the super excellent manner and I will score rank one. Does it happen that way? No, doesn't happen. I mean, 10, 15 years back when we used to be in schools and colleges, our preparation 9th standard, 10th standard se shuru hota tha. Abhi to 5th standard, 6th standard, say log, IIT, JE or uh, PMT and what not, people have started preparing. Why? Because when there is more time, when you get more time, there is time to practice Krishna consciousness. Similarly, remembering the Supreme Lord at the time of death is not a joke. It requires a lot of practice. And therefore, when we take up to the Krishna consciousness process early on, when we take this chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra very, very seriously, and complete our rounds with due attention, practicing it day after day, you know, year after year, then you know, it gets into the system. Then one day if our rounds are left, it bugs us. Right? But if someone is not serious, there is that proverb. So no. So what, what, if we at all want to achieve success at the end of our lives, we need to understand that how, whatever time is there, it has to be invested in very, very appropriately. So yes, Rukmini Devi here is teaching us that we should take the right action at the right time in our life. When Krishna blesses us with the association of devotees, when Krishna blesses us with the no, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, we should be willing to accept it with all our hearts. And we should be willing to take up to the process of Krishna consciousness, even though up until now we had not been practicing anything of that sort. Right? I mean, we are here clad in dhoti and kurta and tilak and everything, who, who amongst us, I mean, very few of us may be here who were born like that, right? Someone taught us, this is the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, bolo, Hare Krishna, Hare, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Kabhi kabhi to bina pura repeat kiya prasad bhi nahi milta hai, nahi. पहले बोलो हरे कृष्णा बोलो हरे कृष्णा देखे ना आपने तो फिर वो स्पून उधर से प्रसाद गिरता है सो यस कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस मे बी समथिंग न्यू फॉर अस देर इज अ ब्यूटीफुल सेइंग इट इज सेड दैट दी मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट थिंग इन कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस व्हाट इज द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट थिंग इन कृष्णा कॉन्शियस द मोस्ट डिफिकल्ट स्टेप इन कृष्णा कॉन्शियसनेस इज द नेक्स्ट स्टेप दैट वी आर आस्ट टू टेक समझ में आया आपको? Is the next step, just like you may be attending some program, ठीक है? आप एक बार आपको किसी ने बुलाया program में, you know, please come for this weekly program. We have a person coming from the Hare Krishna temple, and he speaks nice things. तो he also thought, okay, let me go and check it out. 
what this person is speaking. So, okay, one time I went, ah, tha. what was the best thing? Oh, dinner, dinner, apne ghar mein nahi banta aisa. Udar ka dinner bhoot achcha tha. So, next step, kya bolte hai? Thik hai. Agle hafte, phir se aana. So, then, that is a difficult step, right? Thik hai, one time you told, please come. One time I went. Now you are asking me to come? Every time. Okay, I start coming to the program every time. Then the story doesn't end there. You should also come to the temple. We don't have just this one program. You should also come to the temple on Sundays. Okay, I also started coming on the temple on Sundays. Then the next step, look, everyone is having something in their hands. <laughs> everyone is having something in their hands. So you should have also have this. ठीक है हमको भी दे दिया गया ये लोग गिफ्ट चॉप से अच्छा नया नया बीड बैग नया नया माला हम भी लटका के घूम रहे हैं पता नहीं किसने हमको क्या पढ़ा दिया ओके वी आल्सो स्टार्ट चैंटिंग एंड देन वी स्टार्ट चैंटिंग टू राउंड्स एंड देन वन डे प्रभुजी और माताजी सेस इट हैज बीन क्वाइट सम � and more rounds, and more rounds. And it, you know, it appears that if I had told you first, I would have closed this game there. Correct? But no, the story doesn't end till this personality successfully is, you know, able to pull us right from one till a good 16 rounds and we are also busy getting up early in the morning and grabbing our bead. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare, Soch Rhe, Kab Chalu Hua, Kab Khatam Hoga. You know? <laughs> and then the next step comes, nahi, you should also attend counseling meetings and you should also aspire for initiation and serve the spiritual master and you know, develop desire to serve Srila Prabhupada and dedicate your life for the pleasure of Srila Prabhupada and the story seems unending because Krishna is unlimited and ways of serving Krishna, they are unlimited, right? Previously, we used to come to uh, the festivals and honor Mahaprasad. Now we are told, okay, when you come for the festival, please bring bhoga for the Lord, right? And then, you know, initially we may bring some one or two bhogas, and then we see on Radhashtami, there are 1500 items of bhoga that devotees are bringing, and then we also get, oh my God, I also know so many things. Krishna, yes, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, I also make. So, yes, the whole purport here, why I'm describing this is that we have also taken to the process of Krishna Consciousness and we have also done things we had never imagined we'll be doing, right? But here Rukmini Devi is speaking or telling that if at all we have to develop that relationship with Krishna, we have to take right decisions in our life at the right time. We cannot procrastinate. We cannot push things to be done tomorrow. It has to be done today. Because the fact of the matter remains that how much time do we have in this human form of life, no one knows, right? So therefore, today is the day. So yes, bhakti is not to be begun at the fag end of our lives. We should realize the opportunity to get into the association of Krishna as soon as possible. There is a beautiful comparison that is given herein. Rukmini Devi is compared to a living entity of this world. Bhishmaka, I'm sorry, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Rukmi is compared to the devilish mind of the living entity. And Shishupal is compared to the uncontrolled senses or the impure senses. And the Brahmana that Rukmini Devi summons to the Supreme Lord is compared to the spiritual master or the Guru. So, if the living entity has to get in association of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there has to be two things that must be there. The first thing is that it has to override the propositions of the mind to surrender to the senses. The senses are impure. Sishupal is an impure personality. And, uh, and Rukmi is like the demon. He wants to hand over the living entity that is Rukmini to the impure senses, to the dictation of the senses. But the living entity, the responsibility of the living entity is to put 
the faith in the words of the spiritual master and you know forward her case to the supreme lord so the brahmana acted as the messenger of rukmini devi and the brahmana takes the message of rukmini devi to krishna so that is how the living entity is supposed to handle the mind pray to krishna and have faith in the spiritual master this letter of rukmini devi <coughs> is very very significant krishnadas kaviraj goswami in chaitanya charitamrita describes that sometimes sri chaitanya mahaprabhu he used to dance in the house of chandrashekhar acharya and he used to dance all night long and one of the themes remembering which sri chaitanya mahaprabhu used to dance was this prayers these prayers of rukmini devi now bhagavatam has many prayers there are prayers of the demigods to krishna within the womb of devaki there are prayers by prahlad maharaj there is prayers by dhruv maharaj prayers by the personified vedas and all of these prayers run into chapters huge prayers large number of prayers but the prayers of rukmini devi they are very short only three or four verses but then even though they are very short they convey the essence of her heart so rukmini decided that krishna was the perfect husband for her in the second canto shrimad bhagavatam prabhupad mentions that krishna is actually the supreme maintainer controller and the master of all the living entities in this world this second canto fourth chapter 20th verse sukhdev goswami gives a very very beautiful comparison how krishna is the supreme husband shriya patir yagya pati hi prajapati dhiyam patir lokapati dharapati patir gati chandh ka vrishni satvatam prasidatam me bhagavan satam pati he compares krishna to the husband of many many things krishna is shriya pati he is the master of the goddess of fortune now goddess of fortune is lakshmi devi and krishna is the master of lakshmi devi in other words he is the master of all the opulences that exists in this world krishna is yagya pati bhagavad gita de- describes that how krishna is bhokta ram yagya tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram that he is the director of all sacrifices and he is the benefactor of all sacrifices he is yagya pati he is prajapati he is the one who has from whom all the praja or all the progeny has emanated he is the one who created lord brahma and others so therefore he is the leader of all living entities prajapati he is dhyam pati from him comes knowledge remembrance and forgetfulness mattah smritir gyanam apohanam cha and therefore dhyam pati refers that how krishna he is the controller of intelligence in the bhagavad gita he describes that for a sincere person who wants to come to him i provide him with the required intelligence by which he can come to me so that is dhyam pati he is lokapati he is the proprietor of all the planets within the creation all the spiritual and within the spiritual and material worlds he is lokapati he is dharapati as the incarnation of uh, varaha dev he lifted bhumi devi he lifted dhara devi from the uh, garbhodak sagar there was a fight that had happened between hiranyaksha and uh, uh, varaha dev and hiranyaksha had uh, you know toppled off uh, earth from her orbit and that is when by her by his task lord varaha he <coughs> lifts uh, bhumi devi that is how he is dharapati patir gatis cha andhaka vrishni satvatam he is the protector and glory of all the kings like andhaka and vrishni of the yadu dynasty <coughs> and he is satam pati he is the worshipable lord of all the devotees this 
there is a very peculiar characteristic in this letter of rukmini devi in this letter of rukmini devi when we go through it <coughs> it signifies a very very desperate expression of her surrender rukmini devi was able to understand the urgency of the situation the gravity of the situation bhishmaka was a very powerful ruler rukmi was a very powerful personality the allies of rukmi sishupal and jarasand remember jarasand we had begun our talk with this great personality so jarasand was an ally of uh, rukmi so rukmini devi she knew very well that fighting these you know whole thing <coughs> just on one's own prowess is not going to be possible and therefore she needs to do something very very urgently and therefore in her letter she very desperately expresses expresses her sentiments to lord krishna so it is said that in this material world we cannot assume anything we cannot think that with the passage of time everything will be set right chinta mat karo samay ke sath sab theek ho jayega does that happen that way no it doesn't happen the geeta defines very very explicitly this world is dukhalayam asashvatam right <coughs> this world is filled is going to be filled with miseries and it is temp temporary in nature so therefore unless and until there has the surrender of a living entity is explicit in nature sometimes people say we also have devotion within our hearts आप लोग क्या इस्कॉन वाले इतना भक्ति भक्ति करते रहते हैं हम भी अपने घर में भगवान की पूजा करते हैं है ना भारत में हर कोई भगवान की पूजा करता करता है कि नहीं मतलब ठीक है अभी मॉडर्न सिनेरियो को थोड़ा छोड़ दे तो बट देन यू नो मेनी टाइम्स पीपल से कि आई ऑल्सो वर्शिप कृष्णा विद इन माई हार्ट हम हृदय के अंदर भगवान को मानते हैं हम भी भगवान को मानते हैं लेकिन भगवान के लिए कुछ आप करेंगे डू यू वॉन्ट टू डू समथिंग फॉर दी लॉर्ड डू यू वॉन्ट टू चैंड दी होली नेम्स ऑफ दी लॉर्ड आर यू रेडी टू सेक्रीफाइस सम ऑफ योर टाइम सम ऑफ योर एनर्जी फॉर द प्लेजर ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड डोंट आस्क मी टू सेक्रीफाइस एनी थिंग आई वॉन्ट टू बी ए पैसिव डिवोटी है ना पैसिव डिवोटी यू अंडरस्टैंड हु इज नॉट एक्टिवली वॉन्टिंग टू सरेंडर here is rukmini devi her surrender was not passive she took certain concrete steps to express her surrender for the supreme lord she summoned this brahmana she wrote down this letter and she expressed a desperate sense of urgency in that letter and she sent that brahmana with an urgent you no know, with an with a high priority on a high priority mail that was a very high priority mail and because krishna also understood that is why he had left that 18th battle with jarasand and he rushed back because he knew udhar ek inbox mein kya aane wala hai <laughs> mail aane wala hai vidarbha se right because krishna knew the urgency he is omni omniscient krishna knew very well and therefore even for a living entity that expression of surrender has to be very active in nature we can't just excuse ourselves saying that oh i'll be a passive devotee once in a while i'll go to some program i'll hear some krishna katha have some prasad and let you know just leave me at that nahi krishna is not a person who will just leave us once we come to his door steps you see the form of gopinath no he is bent at three places you know the form of the lord is tribhanga so once krishna enters into someone's life it is very difficult to take him out right so therefore you know and 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 it should not be that it should not be a cause of some fear or anything are baap re bhagwan meri zindagi mein aane wo hamare bhale ke liye we shouldn't feel ki you know ab tak sab kuch acha chal raha tha we may think like that we may think like that but the devotees of the lord they know that no matter how much we may consider that my life is going on too nice 
कोट अनकोट कूल बोलते ना कूल माय लाइफ इज गोइंग ऑन वेरी कूल नो मैटर हाउ कूल योर लाइफ इज गोइंग ऑन द एंजाइटीज ऑफ मटीरियल नेचर विल जस्ट हीट अप द माइंड टाइम एंड अगेन दैट इज हाउ द मटीरियल वर्ल्ड हैज बीन डिजाइंड and and uh, in her prayers rukmini devi mentions you know one of the prayers that he that she one of the you know the narrations that rukmini devi summons krishna is she addresses krishna is that just by hearing about you the heat within the minds of the living entity that gets dissipated that is the one of the aspects of her prayers so yes dependence of the supreme lord along with a detailed active plan by a devotee is going to award the desired destination rukmini devi she addresses krishna by the word ajita in bhagavatam in that letter she mentions krishna as ajita sorry ajita refers to one who is unconquerable jita means one who can be defeated and ajita means one who cannot be defeated So Rukmini Devi knew very well that Krishna is all capable. He is an expert. He is Ajita. But that is what her intelligence was speaking. But then she did not want to take any chances, and therefore what she does is that in her address to the Lord, she presents a detailed plan how Krishna can abduct her, a detailed plan of action. so yes the intelligence was speaking that krishna is ajita krishna is unconquerable he can do so whatever if he wants he can do it but then emotions took over she did not want to take any chances and therefore rukmini devi she presents this detailed plan yahan pe security bahut tight hai charo taraf cctv cameras lage hue hain you know this big <coughs> this big personalities kings have arrived from different parts of the world <coughs> and therefore oh my dear lord it may not be easy for you to take me out of this situation but then because she was also from the kshatriya clan she was an insider <coughs> she knew the how to get out of the chakra view and that is how she mentions a detailed plan look she presents the time when can you abduct me she mentions the place i'll be going to this goddess durga temple and then on the way back you know before i reach my house that is the best place so very detailed plan <coughs> is presented by rukmini devi so here there are these two aspects that she is demonstrating one is the desperate surrender that she is demonstrating in her letter and she is presenting a detailed action plan so when there is a combination of this these both these factors the factor of desperate surrender desperate desire to be in the association of the supreme lord and a detailed plan how can we do it how can we as sadhakas plan our krishna conscious future in a manner so that we will be in association of krishna tomorrow we can't let ourselves we can't subject ourselves to the ways of the material nature right because the material nature has been designed in a manner to keep us away from krishna right but then when we come up with a plan okay this is how गौर पूर्णिमा से सोलह माला जब चालू किया कार्तिक यात्रा यस आई एम कमिंग फॉर कार्तिक यात्रा हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू आर कमिंग फॉर कार्तिक यात्रा श्री मायापुर धाम श्री मायापुर धाम की ज्यादा लोग नहीं आ रहे ऐसा क्यों हो रहा है ओके सो यस वी शुड आल्सो हैव अ डिटेल्ड प्लान फॉर आवर एडवांसमेंट इन कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस वॉट डू आई डू नेक्स्ट वी शुड बी आस्किंग फ्रॉम पीपल हु आर देयर टू गाइड अस दिस इज वॉट इज माई सिचुएशन how do i move from this stage to the next stage although the next step may be the most difficult step just like when we are chant we are not chanting anything someone asks us to chant two rounds like it's a very you know disastrous situation matlab main kya main 10 minute hari krishna mahamantra likhe main jap karta rahunga 
and then when we start chanting eight rounds, chanting two rounds so, seems to be very insignificant. And someone who has been chanting sixteen rounds for so many years, he is looking back and thinking, "You know, इतना क्या सोच रहा दो माला जब करने के लिए?" And and the first time we start attending some program, immediately people who know us they label us with, you know, ये हरे कृष्णे वाला बन गया. Yeah, Hare, Hare. he's just come for one or two programs, right? And there is this, you know, devotee who has been there in the movement for 30, 40 years, and he's seeing that, you know, this person is being glorified as being a Hare Krishna, not doing anything, and still he's being glorified. So yes, here coming back to our uh, factors here, there has to be dependence on the Supreme Lord, and there has to be a proper plan. Only when they, these two things are there. Will we be achieving the desired destination of being in the association of the Supreme Lord Krishna? So yes, because uh, Rukmini Devi has both these factors well in place, Krishna very well accepts her devotion, and uh, will rush through a little bit that how Krishna, as enemies, they look on Krishna. She sees the princess who was eager to mount his chariot. and as rukmini devi she uh, jumps on to the chariot of krishna immediately all the other kings they attack and seeing the attack of the king rukmini she gets little worried now krishna replies a very significant he gives a very significant answer here he says to rukmini devi don't worry don't get bothered your soldiers will easily defeat these kings now it has been just a few moments that krishna has accepted her devotion and within just those few moments krishna is ad, you know he is addressing rukmini and saying that all the soldiers that have come with me from dwarka they are no longer mine who are they they are now your soldiers so that is the beauty of surrender surrender may be having a very desire, you know very very uh, very very negative connotation in this world but then surrender to krishna it is said that krishna just by you know just by getting a small glimpse of surrender of his devotee he is ready to give himself to him it is said that when a living entity he takes one step towards krishna krishna takes thousand steps towards that living entity and the steps of krishna are simply too large within just two steps krishna had you know covered the entire material creation as lord trivikram right like that so that is a very beautiful uh, analogy that uh, is presented here in another very beautiful lesson here is that after that battle the kings are defeated rukmi is caught he was also a part of the attacking team and krishna is about to kill rukmini that is when rukmini devi she you know holds krishna and she pleads krishna not to kill her brother that is very significant one may say that you know why to have such a sentiment for such a person rukmi he wanted to give you to the in marriage to shishupal but it is mentioned that how rukmini she harmonized the relationships she had very beautifully she was connected to rukmi and therefore she did not want him to be killed by krishna but at the same time she did not allow her affection for rukmi to get swayed away from krishna there was affection for her family member for her own kinsman right but then she did not allow that affection to come in way of her relationship with the supreme lord so when we are in proper cognizance of how relationships should be prioritized in this world how a relationship with krishna has to be given a higher priority that is what we can learn from this particular past time and then eventually krishna he doesn't kill rukmi 
he just shaves him off in a very uh, artistic fashion and Ruk rukmi he's 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 still fuming you know it is said that out of all the anarthas the false ego of a living entity is the last to go now here was rukmi utterly defeated by the armies of krishna and he was shaved off you know in a very irregular manner and his mustache and beard and everything but still rukmi's false ego did not finish off it is said that he resolved that he will not go within the kingdom of kaundinapur within the kingdom of vidarbha he will not enter that city he will remain on the outskirts of the city unless and until he kills krishna he will not return back to that city that is the resolve rukmi had so even after humiliation rukmi resolved to kill krishna and he vows not to enter kundina kundina gram or you know his uh, city like this so such kind of vows are expressed to be in the mode of ignorance so there are different vows some vows are taken in the mode of goodness some in passion and this is an example of a vow taken in the mode of ignorance and uh, going ahead sure then the marriage party moves on krishna very successfully with all the yadu army they arrive in dwarka and there is a very pompous marriage ceremony that is described in the uh, 56th chapter of the 10th canto that goes there i'll just end up with a small understanding of the how there is a rukmini temple in dwarka and a very beautiful pastime is there that how when rukmini devi and krishna were living in dwarka one time they learned that durvasa muni was around so those of you who have been to dwarka you have seen that there is the dwarka dish temple right in the middle of the city right anyone been to dwarka here any place raise your hands yes many devotees have been to dwarka so the temple of dwarka dish is right there in this main town of dwarka small town were very beautiful but the temple of rukmini devi is pretty far no in the outskirts of the city not even outskirts it's like a good 10 12 kilometers out of the city that there is the temple of rukmini devi so it is explained that how one time durvasa muni he comes to dwarka and krishna and rukmini they invite him for dinner but sometimes durvasa muni he has unique uh, you know conditions so this time durvasa muni he he says that yes i can come for dinner to your palace provided i am not pulled my chariot is not pulled by any animals krishna and rukmini should themselves pull my chariot to the palace so krishna because he is very much uh, uh, favorably disposed towards the brahmanas he agrees and both krishna and rukmini with great difficulty rukmini devi is you know pulling the chariot and midway rukmini devi she kind of get she gets uh, tired and she feels thirsty so krishna he just ducks the ground with his toe and he there is a spring of holy river ganges that springs out from that place and rukmini devi she drinks that water without offering it to durvasa muni first so durvasa muni immediately as many of us would expect he gets angry and he curses rukmini devi there are two curses that he pronounces he says that for 12 years she will have to be separated from her husband lord krishna and within 16 km radius of this city of dwarka there will not be any sweet drinking water available so even today when you go to dwarka the water there is you know it's hard water khara pani ho it's not sweet drinking water so that is because the curse of uh, durvasa muni and then the spot where ganges uh, water manifested and rukmini devi later did penance for 12 years that is where the current uh, temple of rukmini devi is in dwarka so this temple was built by the great grandson of krishna vajranab and a very beautiful white marble statue of rukmini devi is there in the chaturbhuja form as the supreme goddess of fortune like that and uh, today the darshan also we have here the chandan yatra darshan of radha gopijan vallabh is rukmini devi is uh, worshiping 
Udupi Sri Krishna. So yes, this uh, beautiful form of the Supreme Lord Himself was given by Lord Krishna Himself to Rukmini Devi and Rukmini Devi was daily worshipping this form in Dwarka. And after the annihilation of the Yadu dynasty, when Dwarka submerged in the sea, this uh, beautiful deity of Krishna also got submerged in the sea. And the story goes that how one time there was a merchant, this was just uh, 800 years back, there was a businessman who was travelling from Dwarka and he was travelling along the uh, uh, west coast of India and his boat, the boat of the businessman gets stuck up at a place called Udupi here and that is when Sripad Madhvacharya, the great Vaishnav uh, Acharya, he was there in uh, Udupi and because he himself was an incarnation of Vayudev, he just waves his Uttari and the boat of the businessman gets out of, you know, uh, gets freed basically. And this businessman is very much grateful that, you know, you have saved so much of my hard-earned uh, possessions. So what can I give you? So Madhvacharya says that uh, I am a renunciant, what can I take from you? But then this businessman says that, uh, but I have nice Gopi Chandan that I am getting from Dwarka. So please accept it. And then when that Gopi Chandan is brought there, no one is able to lift it. It's so heavy because now that, you know, this businessman had just got some heavy weight. He just needed some heavy weight to balance his boat in the rough uh, sea weather. So just to balance his boat, he had some Gopi Chandan and he said, okay, anyways, this is of no use to me. Maybe you will be able to use it. So Madhva, and then, but then no one is able to lift it. But then Madhvacharya, when he comes, as he touches the, you know, huge amount of Gopi Chandan, the whole, the whole thing bursts apart and the deity of Udupi Sri Krishna manifests, very beautiful deity. You can go to Udupi sometimes and take darshan of uh, this Udupi Sri Krishna, which was personally, uh, you know, worshipped by Rukmini Devi at uh, Dwarka. And over a period of time then subsequently Madhvacharya, he established very gorgeous uh, deity worship there. So yes, uh, today on the occasion of Rukmini Dwadashi, we can also submit our prayer to Rukmini Devi. What, what could be our prayer to Rukmini Devi? We have a, we can it's just compiled some things. That by her mercy and the mercy of the Supreme Lord, we can also recognize our situation in this material world. Just like Rukmini Devi, she was able to recognize the situation in which she had been put. Similarly, we can also recognize that how we are also being tormented, no matter how comfortable any situation in the material world may seem like, there is always danger. danger. Padam padam yad, vipadam na tesham. So once we recognize our situation in the material world and we understand the urgency to take to, Krishna Consciousness. We need to understand that Krishna Consciousness is not something optional. It is not something, you know, kuch to bol rahe. maybe, okay, nice, good things they are speaking. But then we need to understand that these are the words of the Shastra. These are the words of the Acharyas. And the Guru, Sadhu and Shastra, they are speaking for our benefit. So we should understand the urgency of taking to Krishna's, taking Krishna's shelter and how do we take Krishna's shelter when we keenly hear Krishna Katha, when there is a proper su sufficient reception of Krishna Katha, just like we don't, you know, feel satisfied unless and until we have a good amount of prasad, right? Before coming to Hare Krishna, the conception of prasad we had was a palm full. Prasad matlab, thik hai, thoda sa itna prasad de dije. Lekin aap Hare Krishna mein aate hai, to aapko prasad nahi dete, pehle plate dete. Phir plate dhire 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 bharta jata hai. So similarly, we should understand that transformation is not going to come about unless and until there is a keen reception of Krishna Katha. And once we hear Krishna Katha, there has to be meditation. Just hearing is not going to serve the purpose. Whatever we hear, 
we need to reminisce on that we need to remember it we need to meditate on it so meditating on the beautiful form beautiful qualities past times of the supreme lord that is when uh, there will be an effect and then intelligently planning our krishna conscious future not just being a passive hearer of krishna consciousness not just limiting ourselves to just hearing there has to be a intelligent plan in place there is a beautiful saying that one who fails to plan he plans to fail right so yes after there is an intelligent plan not keeping other options in mind that is a condition of krishna sarv dharman parityajya wo nahi chalne wala hai sunday idhar मंडे उधर ट्यूसडे उधर वेडनेसडे उधर यस प्रोग्राम्स वीकली प्रोग्राम्स कैन बी एक्सपेरिमेंटेड लाइक दैट बट देन यू नो अपार्ट फ्रॉम कृष्णा कृष्णा मे नॉट लाइक इट सो यस नॉट कीपिंग अदर ऑप्शंस इन माइंड एंड देन फाइनली लाइक रुक्मिनी देवी शी आइडेंटिफाइड हर सेल्फ एज द सर्वेंट ऑफ द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड एंड केप्ट सर्विंग हिम विथ लव so that is the eternal constitutional position of a living entity that how we can also one day identify ourselves uh, very solidly as a servant of the supreme personality of godhead and become firmly established in the service of the supreme lord so this is a, a beautiful acronym i'll just repeat this acronym is rukmini rukmini r stands for recognizing our situation in the material world u stands for understanding the urgency of taking to krishna consciousness krishna consciousness is not a optional thing it's not a artificial imposition of the mind it is something very natural for the soul only that it has to be done under proper guidance then key refers to keenly hearing krishna katha and meditating on krishna's name form qualities and pastimes m i stands for intelligently planning our krishna conscious future or letting others help us in planning our krishna conscious future if we may not be so conversant or capable of doing so and then n refers to not keeping other options in mind and finally identifying ourselves as the servant of the supreme lord and becoming situated in serving the supreme lord with full heart and soul thank you all very much shri shri rukmini dwaraka dhish ki shrila prabhupad ki